This is the introduction to the viscometry experiment for Chem 311L. The goals of this experiment are to first use water to calibrate a viscometer and then to use that calibrated viscometer to find the viscosity of several polymer solutions, both cleaved, intact, and intact polymers. You're going to use the data from these trials, the difference in viscosity between cleaved and uncleaved polymers, to determine the fraction of abnormal linkages in the polymer. So a normal polymer forms head to tail, head to tail, head to tail from the subunits. In some fraction of those linkages are backwards, head to head linkages. So you're going to find that fraction using your data. So viscometry is the measurement of viscosity, which depends on the flux of momentum in a material that's moving through some sort of pipe or tube. For gases, this is very straightforward. Uh, you get a simple equation that depends on the temperature of the gas molecules and sort of the freedom that they have to move around. But for liquids, like a solution of uh, polymer or just water even, the equation becomes a lot more complicated. Uh, so the viscosity, which is eta, depends on the radius of the tube and the length, depends on the volume of the liquid flowing through the tube and the pressure drop from the beginning of the tube to the end. And that also depends on the time the liquid takes. So we need to know all these things if we want to calculate the viscosity from the time the liquid takes to move through a viscometer. Now a viscometer is a piece of glassware that looks like this. Uh, this specific kind is a Canon Fence viscometer. There are many viscometers with different geometries, uh, but this is the one that we're going to use in Chem 311L. So the time in that previous equation is the time that it takes for the liquid to fall through the tube from mark A to mark B, from the upper to the lower mark. So if we want to use that equation, we then need to know R, delta P, L, and V for this viscometer. V is straightforward. We could fill the viscometer with a pipette. Uh, L is the length, and we could attempt to measure that. Delta P and R are practically impossible to measure. So we're not going to. We're going to ignore all of those quantities, and instead we're going to use a comparison to a fluid of known viscosity. So we're going to sim get a simplified equation that relates two viscosities, one known and one unknown to the densities of the two solutions and the times the two solutions take to go through the viscometer. So if we can find a solution that has a well-defined viscosity density and then we can measure the time it takes in, in our viscometer, we can use that as all of the zero, subscript zero quantities in this equation. Then we can measure the density and time of our unknown solution and have its viscosity just from this equation. A good candidate solution to use, you may have guessed already, is water, because water has a well-defined viscosity and density, both of which are simple functions of temperature. You can look them up in a table, uh, find those with no problem. So, since we need to control the temperature exactly, we're going to use the experimental setup that you see here. Uh, in the 3,000 milliliter beaker, when you come in, it's going to be filled with water. It's not filled right now, just for uh, demonstration purposes but it's going to be filled with water and you're going to have either a thermometer or your thermocouple and a multimeter to measure the temperature. Uh, the reason that your thermocouple might be advantageous is because the temperature may change over time and so for each run of you know, measuring the time that it takes for the liquid to go through this viscometer, you're going to want to know the temperature. Ideally you will keep it as close to constant as possible but that may not, uh, may not be feasible. All right. Uh, this beaker is set up on a stirring hot plate, and so you can control the temperature by adding heat if you need to. Uh, you should definitely be stirring the whole time so that the bath has the best chance of being, you know, all the water being the same temperature. The viscometer should be clamped into the um, water bath by the clamp you see there, which is attached to a ring stand, which you can't see. Uh, you should only clamp one of the tubes, the thicker one. Uh, you should not clamp across both tubes because then the viscometer won't sit straight up and down. It's very important that it sits straight up and down uh, for proper function. Uh, another thing to make sure of before you add the water is that the viscometer is clamped at such a height that the stir bar is not going to hit it when it starts stirring. Uh, the viscometer is a pretty fragile piece of glassware and if you break it during the experiment, you're going to have to start all over because your calibration will only apply to that specific piece of glassware. 
So you're going to use a pipette to fill the viscometer through the bigger of the two tubes. You're going to want to touch the pipette to the side of the tube and let the liquid flow down very gently into the viscometer. The reason to do this is because we don't want any bubbles. The polymer solutions you're going to use are very good foam stabilizers. So they will form bubbles and the bubbles will not go away. The problem with that is that it's going to interfere with the ability of the solution to move through the viscometer and so it's going to give you incorrect times. You really don't want that. So for all of the procedures involving the viscometer, you want to make sure to minimize anything that's going to form bubbles in your solution. Once you've filled the viscometer, you want to wait for a few minutes to make sure that the liquid inside is the same temperature as the water bath. Once you're ready to begin your experiment, you're going to take a pipette bulb, same one you used for the pipette, and put it on the, squeeze it, and put it on the small tube of the viscometer, and use that to draw the solution up into the top bulb that you see there. Once the liquid is in there, you can take the pipette bulb off and let it fall down, let the liquid fall down through the viscometer. And there are two marks on the viscometer, which you can see here. As the liquid drains down past the top mark, you'll start your timer. And as it drains down past the bottom mark, you'll stop your timer. And that is your time, T, in that previous equation that you're going to use to calculate your viscosity. You'll notice the lower mark, it looks like there are two lines. There are actually not. This is parallax error because the camera here is at the level of the upper mark. So, which line do you use? Uh, well, you don't. What you do is you make sure that your eye is at the level of the mark that you're trying to read. So when the liquid is passing the top mark, your eye will be a little higher. Bring your eye down to the level of the lower mark to when you're ready to stop the timer. All right, this is the same rule that goes for reading a burette, if you have experience with that. If your eye is not right at the level of the line, you'll see two lines. There's no way to tell which one is correct. Neither of them is correct, in fact. Your data analysis for this is pretty simple, and it's explained extensively in the lab manual and in your textbook. Uh, so what you're going to do is find these two times for water and for the solutions of your polymer, uh, cleaved and uncleaved. You're going to use the known viscosity of water and the known density at that temperature to find the unknown viscosity of your solution. Then from there, you're going to use the viscosities of the cleaved and uncleaved solutions uh, to calculate various parameters, one of which is the fraction of head-to-tail or head-to-head -head linkages in your polymer.